In one of the other videos I've got up, I talked about getting rid of excessive ringing in your snare drum uh, th through a couple of different ways. Raising the pitch of the drum head, tuning it up, uh, changing the pitch of the, or the tightness of the snare wires, and also being mindful of where you're striking on the drum. All these things can affect the amount of ringing you're getting out of a drum. Uh, it is possible to do muffling techniques where you add things to the drum. There are commercially available heads, drum heads, that have muffling built into them. They'll have muffling around the edge. Uh, may have a reinforcement dot in the center on top of or on the underside of the head. Uh, different numbers of plies. We'll get into that in another video. But just taking the drum I've got now, which has what's called a single ply coated head. If you have a Remo Ambassador or an Evans G1, this is an Aquarian texture coated. They're all basically the same thing. One thin sheet of plastic with a coating on top of it. And that will have a fairly lively sound. I've tuned the drum down to get a little bit more ring. You got a nice full sound, the high sound, the low sound. So you could go where they have, but you're kind of locked into it. If you put a head on that's got muffling built in, you can't bring any of that ringing out. It's taken out for you and it's kind of been decided and you're kind of stuck with it. If it's a sound you like, great. If not, then you have to go to a different drum or put a different head on there. But some basic muffling techniques here. And there's some snare drums will have a, a, a it's called a tone control built into the side. You'll have a knob on the side and a little felt disc that presses up against the head. Uh, I've got those on one or two of my older drums. I don't use them much and I don't have one on this drum to demonstrate. Uh, most of my drums don't have them. They've kind of fallen out of fashion over the past 20 years or so. But if your drum has one, feel free to use it. Just don't over tighten it because that will start to produce some bad sounds on the head. We'll just leave it at that for now. Um, if you have too much pressure pushing up on the head. Uh, but I want to talk about a couple of things that are really easy and easily undone if you decide you don't want that muffling anymore. Uh, one thing you can do, I'll mention one of my favorites, an old school sort of thing. If you're listening to classic rock of the, of the 70s, you know, Eagles, that sort of thing, you hear a really dead snare drum sound, wallet, an actual wallet on it. And you take that and you get a really fat, heavy sound. It goes really nicely if you've got a really low tuned drum. But this is just an, obviously an old wallet. I don't use this one anymore, but I hung on to it just for this purpose. If that's a little much and you just want to take away some of the ringing, one thing you can use is tape. Now this is something called gaff tape, gaffer's tape. Uh, you can see I'm almost out of this roll here. You could use masking tape. You could use duct tape. The only problem with those is they tend to leave a sticky residue on the surface of the head. And I've still got some old drum heads of mine from high school, and you can see tape residue all over them. Um, gaff tape, is they use it in theaters. It's designed to be put on a surface, put on the floor, put on whatever. They use it for just about everything. And when you take it off, it doesn't leave any of the adhesive on there. It's kind of expensive, but if you find you are using this a lot, then it's something to invest in. And I've got a couple of pieces here. I could take just a square. You don't want to do a whole lot. You don't want to cover your drum and tape, but just a little bit out towards the edge will give you some muffling. So if we go back to the original sound, I'm just going to put a piece of tape out here, press it down. gotten rid of some of the sound. So that's one possibility. I'm going to take it off. And if that's covering up too much space, say you're playing jazz, you're playing brushes, and you don't want to cover up too much of the space, you don't want the, getting, the tape getting in the way of the brushes on the drum, you can do a couple of different things. I can take the same piece, I'm going to kind of fold it, almost like it's a small tent, put that over on the edge. This is probably a little bit big for this, but that's all right. We're just demonstrating. Same amount of tape, not as much surface area. And it muffles as well. So if you want to have a large striking surface and you don't want tape getting in the way, you can minimize your surface contact by doing that. You can also, another piece to work with here, if you're going to be moving it around or experimenting, 
taking just the same size piece of tape I just tore one off before we started. I'm rolling it up in a tube, sticky side facing out. Tape off. And it's not taking away a lot of the ringing, but just some of that real high end ringing is gone. Um, so, gaffer tape, gaffer's tape, you know, a bunch of different variations on the name. One other possibility I'll throw out in terms of doing the same sort of thing, there's a commercial, commercially available product just about any place that sells anything drum related will get it for you. It's called Moon Gel. And there are a number of other brands, Drum Dots. Uh, this is the one that I happen to have. Uh, no endorsement, nothing against the other brands. It's just the one I happen to have here. Same thing is kind of a, some sort of space age plastic material. And it'll adhere to the drum and it can be reused over and over again. If I take this piece of tape and I put it on and off a couple of times, it's going to lose it its, its adhesive quality and won't stay on the head anymore. This can be reused. So same thing if I just place it on. And sometimes you'll see several pieces. You can take a piece, cut it in half with scissors. If you want to muffle just a little bit, I've got one piece that I cut in half. I just want to take just a little bit off the sound. So moon gel, really common thing. Last thing I'll mention, if you need a little bit more muffling than the tape, you can take a piece of, this is just tissue paper, Kleenex that I've folded up, maybe half a sheet that I tore off. And you could tape that onto the head. And let me borrow a piece of tape here just to fix that down. If you really need to muffle, we're getting back into the realm of putting a wallet on the drum again. But one possibility for there, because if you do that, again, you're really muffling things. I'm going to take this. I've got a piece of tape that's kind of sticking over the edge. You can see I've used this a little bit. I'm going to tape it to the rim, to the hoop of the drum, and let the tissue paper rest on the head. Still get some muffling. But it's, and you can't, the, my camera isn't good enough for you to see this. It's not really free to move. It's free to move here. So it, as it strikes, it can come off the head a little bit. But then muffles and gets rid of that extra sound. So other options are available. You can take an old drum head, cut a ring, cut a big hole in the middle. So you have a ring that goes around like this. I'm going to do a follow-up video where I get to some of the other devices. Because um, there are a few other options, but... I will tend to focus on tuning and playing first and only go for this kind of external muffling if I'm going for a special effect or if all else fails or if I'm borrowing a drum, I'm playing somewhere and using someone else's drum and I don't have time to tune or permission to tune, I'll just tip a little thing on there like that. Um, so start with tuning, start with your technique, your striking spots, and if that doesn't give you the sound you want, you do have these tuning muffling options available. So. As always, the comment section will be open. If you have any questions, leave them there or speak to me at your next lesson if we're doing lessons right now. And good luck with your snare drum sound.